Welcome to part two of the best five ideas for you know working at home, high paying jobs that pay well, pay well, high paying jobs pay well, that you know you don't have to leave your home, that you don't need that much skill for, you need a bit of skill, but you don't need a crazy amount of skill for. Now like I said in the previous one, not all of these will be your cup of tea, but if you like any of them, then let me know in the comments down below, give this video a thumbs up. And before I tell you these five ideas, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really wanna hit 100K by the end of the year. Like, that is my aim. I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, but hopefully it does happen and you can help me doing that. So without further ado, let's get right into these five ideas. Video transcriptions. What is this? Well, this is very simple. This is basically just taking a video and transcribing it, right? Subtitles or just into a script. Very, very simple. But it's better if you're a fast typer because generally you charge per the time of the video. And if you're spending a lot of time, you know, it's gonna take you a lot longer to do. But if you can, you know, type fast, then it can be a really, really lucrative business for you. How can you get into it? Well, there's quite a few websites where you can actually sign up and people can find you that way. You know, Fiverr, all these other kind of websites, but there are actual video transcription websites like dedicated to video transcriptions. But as well as that, you can do a bit of, you know, hustling. Everyone wants to have transcriptions for all these videos. So you can message people on Facebook, big Facebook pages that do a lot of videos. You can message big YouTubers. You can message Instagram people who do um, IGTV. You can say, do you want me to turn your video into a blog? That's one way of transcribing. Or do you want me to just create subtitles for your video? Brilliant. How much can you charge doing this? Well, based on all the research that I have done, I see there's a lot of websites doing it quite cheap. There's a lot of websites doing it for a bit more. So I would say you can charge, you know, $5 for 10 to 15 minutes of video footage and then $5 every five minutes on top of that. Okay. And you're probably thinking that's not a lot of money, but actually if you transcribe an hour long video, you're making a lot of money. Okay. You can start to make 60 to 90 to a hundred dollars an hour doing this. And that is a pretty good hourly rage in my books. Now, what is my experience with this? Well, I haven't personally done this for video, but I have done this for audio. I used to charge 15 pounds an hour to transcribe someone's dictaphone, right? I know you're thinking, what the hell is a dictaphone? Uh, it's basically this thing that people talk into, right? Record themselves. So this person couldn't type very fast. So that I used to type up all their letters, all their documents, that kind of stuff. I was 16 at the time, okay? so. So it was, it, was a, it was a while ago, but I know I have done this and it is quite lucrative. And now more than ever before where video is so, you know, primed, video is so popular, right? So it's the best time to start doing this for people basically, because back then I did it for audio and it was, it was pretty good. Now you could charge a lot more and do it for video and there's a huge market for it. So that's why I included this because I just thought it was a brilliant idea. <laughs> Virtual assistant, what is this? Well, this is very simple. It's basically where you are just trading your time for money. <laughs> You're basically just doing tasks for someone uh, online. They'll generally find you on platforms like Upwork or People Per Hour, something like that. And people will pay you a certain amount of, minute, a certain amount of uh, money to do certain tasks for them. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what those tasks will be because it can be anything, but that's basically what it is. Now, how can you get into this. The best way to really get into this is to post your, you know, job descriptions, your, 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 your skills on websites like Upwork and, you know, freelance kind of websites, because that is exactly where people are going to find you. And you want to make sure to post all of your skills, because the more skills you have, the more you can charge and the more desirable you seem. So if you are able to type 100 words per minute, put that in there. If you're, if you're a Photoshop expert, put that in there. If you're able to edit video, put that in there. If you're able to you know, do customer service, put that in there. And a lot of jobs have different values. So for example, Photoshop work and video work is going to be a lot more valuable than customer service work. Okay, so put all the things that you're good at in there. If you speak fluent English, put it in there. So all these things put it in there 
and people will hire you for random different tasks and all those different job titles will show up as keywords. So if someone's searching for one job title and you put it in your description, you might get that job. So being a virtual assistant is really, really good. So how much can you actually charge doing this? Well, like I said, it's dependent on a few things. It's dependent on what job you're doing for the person, your skill set, and the country you're in. So if you're in something like the UK or the USA, you're going to be able to charge quite a bit more for your time. If you're in the Philippines, India, that kind of stuff, you'll probably charge a bit less for your time. And if you're doing a lot more expensive work, like video editing, you're gonna be able to charge a lot more for your time, social media, management you'll be able to charge a bit more for your time whereas if you're just doing basic things you know typing well that's not even that basic if you're doing like customer service or um i don't know basic stuff i can't think of basic stuff off the top of my head but then you'll charge a bit less for your time i would recommend starting a bit lower having a look at what everyone else is charging for their time if they're in your country they're your age your experience have a look at what they're charging and then charge a bit lower just to get your reviews up to get your your hours up and to get your experience up on the platform and then eventually you can up your hourly every like every so often. My experience with it, well personally I have never actually done this for someone else, however I have employed many people to do this for me. I have a lot of the time gone on to Upwork and employed a virtual assistant to do random tasks for me here and there, sometimes tasks going on for months. So I definitely know what people look for because I have been that person looking for something. So for me, I've always wanted someone who speaks fluent English. I've always wanted someone who's creative, someone who's able to use Photoshop, someone who's able to type. So these are the kind of skills I've been looking for whenever I've done it. So I would say I recommend putting those skills if you have them down. But yeah, I haven't, like I said, I haven't, I haven't done it myself in terms of being the virtual assistant, but employing someone, I know it's a very, very lucrative job because I mean, the money's left my bank account and gone into theirs and it's been quite a bit of money. So yeah, this is definitely a, a viable option. Creating an online course, selling your skill. What is this? Well, I kind of, I kind of just said what it is, but basically it's packing up your knowledge, condensing your knowledge into a, uh, uh, an easy how to step-by-step -step formula structure kind of thing and selling it for a price that you feel is fair. And this can be in anything, learning the guitar, cutting hair, what have I written down here? How to use makeup, how to take photos. Now I know a lot of you are thinking all these videos are for free on YouTube anyways. Why we like, a lot of people actually prefer to take a course because it's structured, it's a lot of information condensed into one thing. They don't have to search for it. They've also got the added help of the person teaching them. They can ask them questions. So it's actually a very, very good option if you have any form of skill or knowledge in any area. How can you get into it? Well, first you have to, you know, find out or figure out what you're skillful at, what you can condense into a course, and then you've got to create that course. And then there's a few platforms you can actually sell it on. If you just want to simply put it online and let sales come in. You can put it onto a platform like Udemy where typically it will be sold for about $10 per course, which isn't that much money and you don't really have control of the customers, you don't have control of the marketing, you don't really have control of anything. Um, and I have used Udemy, but we're gonna get into my experience later on. But basically you've got that, if you wanna have full control of the customers, the website, everything down, the, everything, then you want to use websites like Thinkific. Thinkific. It just sounds weird to say, doesn't it? Thinkific and also Teachable. Those are two great platforms to actually host your, your, your course on. Now, if you're thinking, how can you get students? Well, if it's on Udemy, it's all organic, but again, it's very little money. If you're doing it yourself, you can use websites like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, I said it again, but whatever, I don't care. There's so many places for you just to post photos and then eventually talk about it and, and promote it and sales will slowly start to come in, but then word of mouth picks up and then eventually sales will start picking up very, very nicely. So this is definitely a very good option. Now, how much can you charge for doing this? Well, this is totally up to you, okay? You can charge whatever you feel your, your knowledge is worth. I would say don't go crazy and charge like $10,000 for a simple one hour guitar course because that's pretty unfair. But what I would say is have a look at the market going rate for your type of course, maybe charge a bit less or a bit more depending on what you wanna do, but have a look at what everyone else is charging and kind of, to get a kind of idea of what your course is worth basically. What is my experience with this? Well, I actually have quite a lot of experience with this because I used to make courses and put them on Udemy, right, and sell them for $10. I know it wasn't very much money, but this was a while ago, and I would create very basic courses. I remember I created a course on how to do the Rubik's Cube. 
why not? Okay, it got a bit of money, it got a bit of sales. And with Udemy, I actually ended up making around twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars, which I thought was really good at the time, anyways, for me. Since then, I've I've, I've stopped all of Udemy because I'm not. I'm not such a fan anymore of just mass creating courses. I only like to create a course that is like proper jam packed with knowledge of, of stuff that I've done. And, and I did do all the previous stuff for the previous courses, but I like to something that I'm currently doing, something that I'm, I'm on it all the time and learning all the time. And then I can put that into, you know, a course. And that's actually what I want to say. I want to say only sell a course if you're going to be completely honest and transparent. Don't just be one of these people who go and copy someone else's pack it into your own little you know way of teaching and then teach it make sure that you actually have experience in what you're teaching right real life experience real world experience of doing what you're teaching if, if you're teaching how to play the guitar make sure you can actually play the guitar if you're teaching how to sell on amazon make sure you actually sell on amazon and you're succeeding with it if you're teaching you know how to take photos make sure you're actually good at taking photos so it just, I just, that's what I want to say. I, I, I want to say, don't just blindly sell things for the money, sell things to actually help people. And hopefully, you know, when these people see that, that you, you want to help them, you will get paid. One of my favorite ones, creating YouTube videos. This is a brilliant one. And let me just start with, what is this? Well, this is as simple as creating videos. Now I know I spoke about affiliate marketing before, creating videos is not the same this is a bit different this is creating videos in whatever topic you want it could be cars it could be business it could be photography whatever it is creating youtube videos is brilliant you just need a phone to shoot the video a lot of people don't want to do this but it doesn't cost anything i know it's incredibly time consuming and i spent many years earning 20 to 70 dollars a month from it and only recently have i started earning a lot more money from it but if you stick with it it can pay off really, really big time, and there's no end to it. It's just it it just goes up and up and up. There's no end to how much money you can actually make from it. The best part is you can choose whatever topic you want. You could do product reviews, like we said. You could do cars. You could do whatever you want. Whatever you're feeling passionate about, you can do. And I always, always recommend this to you know kids who are 14, 15. If they ever ask what to do, I always say, you know, you've got a lot of time. You don't need money right now because you're probably living at home with your parents. So go and start a YouTube channel because in five years time down the line when you need to start making money, your YouTube channel could be your main source of income. Now, how can you get into this? Well, it's as simple as clicking record on your phone. Okay, the only thing I'll say is stick to a niche and stick to an upload schedule and be consistent. And that is all you have to do. Just, oh, it's so easy, come on. It's, I know it's time consuming and it's not actually easy because it takes ages to shoot, it takes ages to plan, it takes ages to edit. But if you've got the time, it, it is just, you know, clicking record on your, on your phone, right? Just stick to a niche, like I said, stick to a niche and make sure you upload regularly. How much can you charge or earn? Well, this isn't really up to you. It's dependent on a lot of things like the topic you choose, the length of your videos. You also need to have 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers before you can even monetize your videos. But I'm gonna just put this out there. Don't do YouTube for the money. Do YouTube because you're passionate about it because I'm gonna be honest with you. If you go into YouTube to do it for the money, you're gonna give up within three weeks because there is no money at the beginning and it's so time consuming. So what I will say is do it because you're passionate about a subject and the money will come down the line. I literally have been doing YouTube for over four years now and only recently in the last two or three months have I actually been earning a proper income from YouTube. Okay, so it's about staying consistent, staying persistent with it and not giving up. But eventually, like I said, there's no telling how much you can earn because you've got sponsorship deals, affiliate deals, uh, YouTube ad revenue, merch, potential courses. There's so much you can do to monetize YouTube. Well, my experience with YouTube, well, I mean, I think I've, I think it's fair to say I have had experience with this business. I remember when I used to earn $70, now I'm earning just over 2000 which I think is a huge, huge increase. And it's, it's just mad. And I would love to talk to you more about YouTube because I love the topic of YouTube. I just don't know if anyone wants to hear about YouTube. Look, if you want to hear about YouTube, let me know in the comments down below because there's so much I'd like to teach you about YouTube. But my experience with it, I think I, I've had a lot of experience with it. I had four and a half years of experience with it now, just over four years of experience with it. And um, it's a good one. It's a good one. Right, moving on. Fulfill services on people per hour or Fiverr. But people per hour is the one I'm specifically talking about. And what, what is this? Let's just start with that. Well, people per hour is a place like Fiverr where people go to pay you to do a certain task. It could be anything from, you know, shooting B-roll for them, 
designing a logo, cropping out, making a background transparent. It can be anything, okay? Literally anything. Now, how can you get into this? Well, the best way to get into it is you can go on People Per Hour and actually see what jobs are selling the most. It have a little thing on the bottom right corner of the image of the job, and you can see which ones are selling the most, and you can just sell those ones. You can charge a bit less for them. You can undercut to start yourself off before you have a bit of reviews and whatever. But the coolest thing about People Per Hour, people per hour which is why I like it, is you can see how many, you know, you can see what's the most popular at that point. Whereas with Fiverr, it's very hard to see what's the most popular. You can you can organize by most popular, but it's not the same as seeing how many orders an actual job is getting. How much can you charge with this? Well, you can charge whatever you want, really, but I would say charge a very small amount to begin with, get yourself reviews, you know, just build yourself up on the website before you start charging a decent amount of money for it. So at the beginning, it's going to be less than minimum wage, but eventually it has the potential to drastically increase, which is what you want to do here. Now, my experience with it, I haven't had any experience with people per hour. I've had a lot of experience with Fiverr, um, which is similar, but people per hour, I haven't had experience with it. The reason I put it in here is because I saw it's quite a hot trend at the moment, people doing it just for a bit of side hustle, literally an hour a day or two hours a day, making a bit of extra money, building up their, their, um, you know, their reviews, all that kind of stuff. And I just thought I had to put it in here because everyone is raving about it. And when I did the research on it, it just made so much sense. So if you're looking for a side hustle to make a bit of extra income, that is one way to go. And that was awesome, wasn't it? These are really, really cool ideas. And let me just quickly do a run through. You had video transcriptions, virtual assistant, online course, selling your skill, creating YouTube videos and uh, fulfilling services on people per hour. These are proper, proper jobs and I would love to make more videos on some of these ideas. So let me know in the comments which one was your favorite idea and I can make I can make proper videos on them, full 15 minute videos just on those ideas, giving you full tutorials or full explanations or how to's and all these kind of things on individual ideas. So let me know which was your favorite and I just wanna say thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And again, if you haven't already subscribed, now is the time. If you haven't liked the video, it's just down there. It takes you a couple of seconds. So, uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.